Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. The sight of a Yakuza Zero character running in panic can mean only one thing. Yes, it's the crazy end of the year rush where we attempt to round up our favourite PC games from the last 12 months. It's been a manic year, so we've limited each member of the Rock Paper Shotgun video department, that's me, Alice and Noah, to four games each. They're not in any particular order, they're just games we personally adored. Hopefully you'd have a good time with any of them. As always, a very quick thank you to Shadow for supporting the channel. For more info on their impressive cloud-based PC, check the link in the description. Of course, please do share your own PC games of 2018 in the comments below, and we'd love it if you subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun. People who do subscribe are incredibly sexy, like this Yakuza Zero character. Quick, let's get onto the games before our eyes burn. Ah! I was looking through my Hitman 2 clips for a favourite, and I keep coming back to this ridiculous footage of everyone in Miami turning into a flamingo. It's a dumb easter egg, you have to execute a mascot with Kronstadt's android assassin, but it perfectly captures Hitman 2's sense of humour, and shows just how stuffed the levels are with things to discover. On paper, six locations may sound stingy, but their physical breadth and mechanical depth makes them incredible playgrounds. Different kills completely rewrite how you see and approach levels, whether you're trying to kill two people with one push, work out how to snipe targets where there are hundreds of eyewitnesses, or, and this one is brilliant, helping another assassin to do all your work for you. Can you look up a bit? Thank you. I've played Hitman 2 for over 60 hours, and still have a huge checklist of things to achieve, and that's before you get into the obsessive world of leaderboards. Oh, nice. Talk your friends into picking up the game, and you'll be competing to see who is the best silent assassin for months to come. Of course, if you prefer your assassins with a bit more hair, maybe you'll be more interested in Noah's next pick. Just as a lamb. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is set in ancient Greece where you can choose for the first time to play as siblings Alexios or Cassandra, though choosing to side with Athens or Sparta in the historical war is a lot less restrictive. Side note, play both sides, it's way more fun. Though I don't think this game deviates too much from the Assassin's Creed formula we've come to know and love, or loathe, Odyssey has also somewhat reinvigorated said formula by taking it in the direction of conversational choices and roleplay driven by narrative. It's sort of Bioware-like, actually. These days it's awfully hard to be able to spend all my time existing in a world that isn't the really real one, but when there are no more dentist appointments, dishes to wash or rental inspections, the world of Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the kind you can easily approach in manageable chunks. The way its systems, of which there are many, are structured and designed made it so easy for me to simply leap in faithfully, scout an area, clean out a camp of enemies, blow some pirate ships out of the water or follow the main story. The map may be huge, but they're split into these beautiful islands and land masses. Not to mention that in guided mode you have the freedom to travel and explore in the way that best suits you. Watching Noah play Odyssey, I calculate she put 7,564 people in hospital. Personally, I'm more interested in fixing them up. And that's the magic of Two Point Hospital. You see, I loved Theme Hospital as a kid, but it certainly had its limitations. No rotatable camera? What is this? A game from the late 90s? Two Point Hospital gets the nostalgia factor down to a T. From the ridiculously named illnesses to the annoying Tannoy announcers, this game makes me feel... four again. Sure, it's been updated in places, you can spin that camera and the building controls let you paint your build to life. Having already come out with its first lot of DLC, I'm excited to see where the game takes us. I enjoy Two Point Hospital's ability to create an interesting campaign and an equally enjoyable, if not more so for me, sandbox mode. With its incredibly enjoyable art and hilarious radio station, it's easy to lose yourself in the world of Two Point County. Of course, not all doctors were as well behaved in 2018, as Noah's next pick will explain. Mission. 
This action role-playing RPG set in the grim Victorian era is the kind of gothic video game we didn't really know we wanted until it showed up, coattails flapping about the windy streets of plague-ridden London. The man inside these fancy threads is Jonathan Reed, revolutionary surgeon and now vampire. Talk about first levels of moral conflict. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? It's a fascinating framing of the classic vampire myth in terms of interactive play that I enjoyed from start to finish. Even the role-playing elements were interesting, ranging from stone-cold killer who can take someone's face off with one swipe of his claws to a much more brooding power of defense, complete with blood shields and everything. It doesn't get it all right, though I would argue that nothing ever truly does. The need for XP, for example, doesn't just have to be satiated with human blood, but can be obtained via smaller battles with enemies, which I guess also classes as spilling blood. But overall, it's an intriguing, not to mention grim, exercise in death, life, and choice. Yakuza 0 is the exact opposite of Vampire. It's big, rash, colourful, and full of life. Well, it's full of life until you start smashing heads in car doors. Here's a game that has no interest in moral dilemmas or choice and consequence. You're following a fixed story, but who cares when that story is about dudes in awesome suits battering the living shit out of each other with kettles. Yakuza's street brawling combat is reason enough to spend 50 hours exploring its two city regions, digging into a real estate conspiracy while solving ridiculous side quests. I really feel like I've seen it all in this game. I've helped a dominatrix whip her nerves into shape, and I had my head kicked in by this horrible giant who wants to steal my lunch money. The relatively small map and its arcade sensibility means you can't really compare Yakuza to the sandbox cities of western games, but it has a sense of style and humour that makes the worlds of Rockstar and their like seem very dull by comparison. Come on, who needs to be a cowboy when you could literally be sorting a man's eyes? I rest my case. If you get bored of decking Yakuza's thugs, might I suggest you take a swing at Monster Hunter World's Giant Beasts? Capcom's multiplayer Monster Basher made us jealous of console gamers for many years, but this PC port is a wonderful introduction to its world. It boils down to an endless loop of crafting and killing. You take down monsters and use their body parts to make bigger weapons to take down bigger monsters. Repeat for hundreds of hours. Okay, there's more to it than that, especially when you start digging into the different weapon classes. Whether you pick a simple sword, a ridiculous lance, or an actual gun turret can completely change your approach to battle. Multiply this by four co-op hunters, and you've got a deep rabbit hole of team tactics to disappear into. Of course, the most important thing is that you get a battle cat and can dress him up in little costumes. Look, he even has a little raft for water levels. I want a little raft for water levels. Monster Hunter should keep you very busy. And if you want a more traditional JRPG, there's another one coming up in about two seconds. In this JRPG, the 11th in the series and first mainline game to release on PC, you play the role of an unassuming 16-year-old hero. He hails from the quaint moss-roofed town of Cobblestone, where a small community of mountain dwellers live, and after climbing the tour to complete an ancient coming-of-age rite, he steps into adulthood with the knowledge that he is the reincarnation of the famed Luminary. But with his somewhat low-key rebirth comes the resurrection of a dark other, and so he, meaning you, must journey across Erdrea with a team of lovable thieves and mages and I think you've heard enough of this to get the gist. You likely already know the JRPG drill, if not the Dragon Quest drill, and if you don't, it can be summed up in one sentence. You must save the world, my son, by battling monsters and stuff. I described Dragon Quest XI, the lazy Sunday edition of the traditional RPG, unless of course you select draconian options to make the game more difficult, as a kind of video game vacation. I stick by that summation. Who needs paid holiday when you have this game? Even now that I've finished it, I frequently dip back in thanks to all that endgame opportunity. And I do it simply to relax and unwind. Forget bath salts and wine, Adrea is where the real chillaxing begins. Even though you technically spend most of your time fighting foes and travelling are we there yet distances that would certainly require a potty stop or 20. Battles are generally straightforward, and locations packed with goodies. 
Throw in some simple weapon forging, leveling systems, and an ease of pace that makes a Ferris wheel look like the Pepsi Max big one, and you have Dragon Quest XI. I love it. It makes me happy. As much as I admire the rainbow fun of Dragon Quest, I'll always be more at home in the mud and misery of The Witcher. I adore Thronebreaker. CD Projekt Red's standalone Gwent RPG has perfectly filled the Geralt-shaped hole in my life. It has great characters, the impossible moral decisions, and loads of nasty beasts and bastards to kill. And the card game reshapes itself to capture the big action moments you expect from The Witcher. Giant monsters are made up of smaller cards that fly around the battlefield, belching fire. Ah, shite! He's raging now! Watch out! While boss fights see enemies infiltrating your ranks or hiding behind castle walls built of cards, the best stuff is in the puzzle matches that give you a fixed hand and very strict win conditions. Working out how to squeeze every last buff out of three or four cards is a great tutorial for the main game. It reminds me of Fight & Magic Clash of Heroes, which is one of my all-time favourites. It's a tad on the easy side perhaps, especially if you've spent the last two years thrashing people in online Gwent matches, but even then it remains a beautifully made thing. From the dinky world map to the ornate card designs, it drips luxury. Well, as luxurious as muddy battlefields can get. Like Matthew, I prefer my games to be less muddy and take place in swanky parties, ideally without someone trying to murder me. You see, in Spy Party, one player is the spy trying to achieve secret goals at a shindig, and the other person is the sniper trying to sniff them out through a rifle scope. If you've ever wanted to trick a fellow human into believing that you aren't a fellow human, then this is the game for you. Wandering around a party and pretending to swap statues around might not sound like a great game, but it's amazingly tense. The higher the difficulty, the more tasks you have to do and the more obvious they are too. Trying to whisper the magic words, banana bread, banana bread, to a double agent is particularly risky. Well, unless you start saying it at random times to confuse the sniper, banana bread. And can you find a chance to look out the window and look at your watch to earn some bonus time without getting a bullet to the face? Like I said, this is tense. Spy Party has been in development since 2009 and has had many years of betas, but 2018 was the year it entered Steam Early Access, so I think it's fair to include it here. And if you thought it was an odd inclusion, it's got nothing on Noah's next game. Nog, or is a video game toy box of fun and really pleasing sound design that is fairly reminiscent of putting blocks through similarly shaped holes, if those shapes started singing, and then unlocked another brand new block that sprouts legs and spins about. In this 3D puzzle boxer of wonder, you make your way through different levels, or monster heads in this case, solving the little mysteries within it by pulling on cords, spinning things, Pushing buttons, you know, what you used to do when you were a child in a toy store, just pressing everything in sight. Or maybe that was just me. Only instead of a grainy snake-in-my-boot result, the sounds that prompt in this game are really magnificent. Every time you complete a puzzle successfully, the monster head in question starts to sing. Which might not sound like much of a payoff, but it is because everything in Nog is so tactile and therefore fun. The game asks you to just fiddle with everything until you figure it all out and move on. And that, in itself, is what makes it so worthwhile. I've spent five minutes trying to link from Noah's Nog to Forza Horizon 4 and I've really got nothing. I mean, you can open the car doors and stuff, but it's not quite the same as getting inside a robot's head. 
No, this is as far from indie as you can get. A big, bold, brum brum blockbuster. It crushes a chunk of Britain into a smaller landmass and gives you over 400 cars to tear up its roads and fields. It mostly builds on the good work of Forza Horizon 3, but the rolling hills of Britain host cross-country rambles that the Australian outback just couldn't match. This being Britain, it also gets a nasty dose of shitty weather, with a seasonal cycle that changes the entire world state once a week. In winter, everything's covered in snow and rivers freeze over, but then in spring, the countryside is churned to mud. If the season outside your real window is getting you down, just boot up the game and you've got a 3 in 4 chance that it's different here. I also adore the new YouTuber side story, inspired by other legendary racing games. Whether you're power sliding around Edinburgh in an ode to Project Gotham Racing, or jumping off hills crazy taxi style, it's delightful to see a big racing star of today paying homage to the games that paved the way. Oh, and it's included in the Xbox Game Pass. I know the pass is aimed at console owners, but Horizon is a Play Anywhere game, which means you get access to the Windows 10 version too. A sneaky way to play one of 2018's very best games for very little money. My final pick for best PC games of 2018 is Mega Aquarium. I might prefer my real life fishy friends to live a free and happy life in the ocean, but in the world of video games, owning a fish prison and making money from them is what it's all about. Mega Aquarium draws on my love of animals and management sims, combining them both into one happy little game where the fish are only mistreated if you let it happen. And it's not going to happen on my watch. I'm basically the Aquaman of Aquarium Managers. But the sense of responsibility you feel for inmates does help you invest in every move you make. You'll feel an enormous sense of guilt as you fail your fish by putting a bully fish in with a wimp fish, or by not giving your fish enough mates to hang out with. If they need a rock to be happy, you give them that rock, you hear? Research new sea creatures and new technology as you create the best aquarium in town. Some might even start calling it a mega aquarium. Hey, that's the name of the game! What are the chances of that? Of course, these were only a fraction of the amazing games we've played this year, so here's a lightning fast rundown of some other bits and bobs we also enjoyed. I was going to include Return of the Obra Dinn as one of my main games, but it's very difficult to show without spoiling it. Short version, it's the best murder mystery game ever made, as you work out what happened to 60 people on board the ghost ship, the Obra Dinn. It's a staggeringly good detective game, and I've linked to my full written review in the video description. But don't read it, just go and play it. And who could forget Into the Breach, squeezing deep strategic smarts into an 8x8 grid as you pummel Earth invaders with giant mechs. It's a proper brain workout. We also love Frostpunk, a game about a city of people who slowly die of cold because you suck at town planning. Well, that's what happened when I played it. And yet people still watch my tips video. Mm -hmm. I found Shadow of the Tomb Raider a little wonky in places, but it made up for it by finally having loads of tombs for Lara to explore. And it's stupidly pretty in places too. If you prefer your adventures with more pointing and clicking, you have to try Unavowed. It adds brilliant player choice to the classic formula, and is one of the best of its kind since the genre's LucasArts heyday. And there's Yoku's Island Express, the Metroid meets pinball mashup we didn't know we wanted until the very clever people at Villa Grilla went ahead and made it, so thanks to them. And how did we not include Dead Cells in the main list? I love Dead Cells! Well, I love Dead Cells when it gives me the toys I like to play with. Buzzsaw gun turrets, please! And last but not least is the mighty Slay the Spire, which I only played for the first time two days ago, because I'm a massive idiot. Why didn't we cover this on the channel? Please don't unsubscribe. And those are just some of the games we've loved in 2018. Thanks for sticking with the list all the way to the end, even after we showed you that creepy guy in his pants. And thanks again to Shadow for sponsoring this RPS video. Shadow is a high-end, cloud-based computer available on any internet-enabled device. Just like any Windows 10 PC, you can use it to work, play or browse. It has the specs to handle any game and comes with an integrated fibre connection, perfect for downloading any game or uploading a video at the speed of light. For more information on Shadow and a discount for RPS viewers, check out the link in the description. In less jolly news, this is also our last video with fellow Rock Paper Shotgun video person, Noah. She's off on her own video adventures in 2019, and we wish her the very best. 
please say nice things about her in the comments. And while you do that, also share your top PC picks from 2018. What games kept you clicking for the last 12 months? Hopefully you've enjoyed our videos this year, and we've got loads more planned for 2019. I'd love it if you subscribed and joined us on that exciting video adventure, and even if you don't, I hope you have a great new year. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.